Hello. Uh, this video uh, gives an explanation about thermal expansion. There are three things to cover uh, solids, liquids and gases. This course however does not cover gases which is a separate subject and it kind of uh, covers a little bit about liquids but it's mostly focused on thermal expansion of solids. So let's take a barbecue grill three pipes, a frame, and let's put a Bunsen burner below, a copper bar above, which is free to expand. So we are all set for a barbecue dinner. Uh, the copper bar is getting heated and it is free to uh, expand in length. Uh, the areas of the different faces are free to expand and the volume of the bar is also free to increase. All of these three things will increase when you heat it. This is an animation that kind of visually shows you how the bar is getting longer and larger. The real life increase may not be so perceptible but then this is an animation just to uh, give an exaggerated picture of uh, what happens really when we transfer heat energy to a metallic object. So let's measure the initial conditions. The initial boundary conditions are temperature, length and pressure. So length is L. It's called the initial length or original length. The initial temperature let's say is T and the pressure let's say is P. The pressure is not very important for solids, but it does get very important for liquids. After it is heated to a temperature T plus delta T, at that temperature, the increased length is shown here. The length increase will be directly proportional to how much we heat it in this fire. So we have to note down in an experiment the final length and the final temperature. Again, the pressure is not very important for solids. Let's look at the equations. So the increase in length by original length takes out the variables of people who may start with different lengths of objects. So that is called strain. So the strain, the linear strain is proportional to the change of temperature, the increase of temperature, obviously. The more we heat it, the more it will increase in length. So the proportionality constant is called the coefficient of linear expansion. So that's simple. Now, if you need to find out alpha at a given temperature, then there is some mathematics and calculus involved, and we have to take the limits with delta t tending to zero and do dl by dt, and then you get this equation. We're not going into those details right now. Similarly, the increase in volume of that copper bar divided by its original volume is volumetric strain. The volumetric strain also, of course, is proportional to how much we are going to heat it and increase its temperature. So here the proportionality constant is called gamma, or the coefficient of volume expansion. The same thing. The principle here is the same if you want to find gamma at a particular temperature and the calculus gives you this equation. Below a particular relationship is highlighted that volumetric expansion coefficient is three times of alpha which is the linear expansion coefficient. This is not to be remembered really. One can deduce it uh, at uh, the drop of a hat because volume is nothing but length, width and height. There are three things there and for isometric, isotropic materials which have properties same in different directions, gamma should be three times of alpha. This is the last slide which uh, points out certain things uh, which are to be noted. For example, gamma is equal to three alpha will not hold for anisotropic materials, that is materials which are not isotropic. For example, crystals, they don't have equal expansion in three directions. The length, width and height all will expand in different ways. 
so that equation will not hold also when we talk about the expansion of liquids pressure will be very important much more than when we talk about solids so pressure should be held constant from the original to the final condition and as a rule liquids expand more than solids the expansion of water is a separate subject which is not dealt with in this course i hope this was useful thank you bye bye